Okay, so the purpose of this is a rough guide. It is a very, very rough guide. It has a specific purpose, which is to try and um, integrate people new to our raid team. So it has very specific strategies. Um, it is not intended as a guide for other guilds to follow, uh, it's specifically for our guild so that new people can pick things up uh, quite quickly because quite a lot of new bosses potentially that would be asked to do in a night. Um, I do try and mention what ranged healers and tanks are up to, although I'm melee DPS, for which it will be most detailed. Um, I don't always know what the other three roles are up to. I sort of I try and keep an eye out on gnomes to see what they're up to, but they're sneaky, you know, you can't always tell. Um, so I might make the odd mistake. Someone can pull me up on that, but we'll see how we get on. So at the start of the fight, make sure ranged are in ranged. Duh. Uh, melee are in melee. Uh, easy, Nespa. Don't use cooldowns at the start of the fight unless they will be up for each of the transitions as well. It's most important they're up for the transitions. Chakrams, uh, there'll be a point assigned according to whether you're ranged, tank, or melee. Make sure you go to that mark or just behind that mark, preferably. Um, if you're the tank that doesn't get Chakram, you need to be sort of taunting the boss, of course, to make sure it stays in. Uh, that's fairly standard. When you get wins and you get the eye pass to you, I'm using Exorcist Raid Tools there. Just right click on a green. You know, everyone who's got wins um, or something relevant that needs the eye, uh, highlight it in green. It's dead easy. Just right click. No problem. It is worth, though, noting a couple of key people on it, though. It's not easy to see who's where on the Exorcist Raid Tools um, Iskar add on. Uh, Shadow Repost again, everyone will go green because you just pass it to anyone. When Shadow Repost comes, if you've got the eye, just pass it to anyone um, just to stop it. But yeah, you, you can't actually easily see because it only puts the first two letters of their name. So right click there, get rid of it. And sometimes you have to pass it to specific people. There might be a named healer for the bombs during the transition so they can, they, they can dispel them. So if you're told of a specific healer it needs to be passed to, make sure you know where they are before the fight starts. You can go straight there. Again, another shadow repost there. At the transition, which will happen in a moment, we get a Phantasmal Resonance. This is ultra high priority. It must be burst down really quickly. Uh, it has a mechanic called Chains that will cast if it's not killed within a certain amount of time. We avoid this on the first two transitions. And the way to do that is to focus it down very, very quickly. No way are we at this point. Um, only cleave if it's incidental, not affecting your single target. Once that's down... Onto the tunnel, uh, Talon Priest as your focus target, but uh, you can then just cleave onto the other ads, no problem at all. Um, even when the boss returns down, if you haven't killed the Talon Priest in time, you'll obviously stay on this ad until it is dead. So the boss is coming down, still stay on the Talon Priest, that has to die before you go back on the boss, of course you can cleave onto the boss, no problem, but keep it... Uh, Keep it there. You notice the range when they're getting the uh, beam um, of fire. Don't so much kite it around with this tactic. They sort of stay where they are and get a cooldown and get spam healed. Another shadow repost. Um, so bear that in mind. If you've got any questions, especially as range, you do need to ask them. We don't want fire going all over the place. You can see there, a person's got fire. They're just standing there. Um, so yeah, we let you stand in fire odd yeah okay uh, but you will get healed um, <clears throat> maybe unless you're a gnome and that's it it's sort of rinse and repeat at this point really it's the transitions you have to save your cooldowns for uh, and make sure you're ready for so I'm just going to skip across the next transition so the next transition it's the same thing it's it's phantasmal resonance burst it down maximum focus on the phantasmal resonance um, because we don't want the dark bindings but as soon as this has died, you notice there's another act. It's just like in Heroic at this point. So once the Phantasmal Resonance has gone down, uh, it's exactly the same priority as um, in Heroic. You take out the Shadowfell Warden uh, as your maximum priority. Cleave onto the others. Obviously, this needs interrupting. Um, I'll kind of be interrupted by someone with the eye. Um, and the other thing, the Talon Priest will be chucking out bombs. That can only be dispelled. Those bombs can only be dispelled by someone with a dispel and the eye. Uh, which is why it's really important that you know who is the healer designated to do that because if you happen to have the eye um, unless there's a need to pass the eye on you can keep it for a bit you can go up a few stacks it's not going to kill you uh, but you do need to make sure like at this point the bombs are gone a healer needed to have that at that point otherwise those bombs go boom and it, you just wipe that's all there is to it you're just going to wipe um, so do make sure that you know the key people know the a tank that might need to interrupt 
so you can pass it to them if they needed uh, but more importantly the healer um, so that you can pass it to them so they can dispel the bombs um, at the crucial phase there again at this point just rinse and repeat i'm just going to go to the last phase where madness happens so with this particular tactic we don't burst down the phantasmal resonance the melee can't do anything else so obviously we're going to do that the range you'll notice they're all buggering off behind me they're all attacking the boss the aim is to try and kill the boss before the transition here or at the very least burst it down to the point where it's only got a few percent left when it lands it's going to cast dark bindings here so we have to move away you cannot stack on top of someone else with dark bindings uh, you are paired but you're invisibly paired you can't see who you're paired with without the eye the eye allows you to see who you're paired with when you find that information out um you can then move on to them as long as it you mustn't move through a dark binding that is not paired to you otherwise it goes boom and it's just going to kill a load of people after a certain amount of time there's what's happened there um if the bindings were not removed they just automatically blow it's like 30 seconds um so yeah that's just death to melee uh, however this doesn't happen all the time sometimes uh, they will actually with higher gear level now people can kill the boss a lot quicker and even if it does come down the range to seal generally fine um and the boss will just die at that point it's just yeah screw melee um but just get used to that so that's essentially how to deal with iskar okay just to show you how to deal with the uh, dark bindings should it become an issue at the end of the fight so dark bindings are being cast make sure you're going to move away you mustn't be near anyone who could also get it uh, you'll see the purple circle around you. you get the eye you can see look you can see who you're chained to pass it to someone else and then move to that person i'm being very careful because i know that that person in between uh, is not the one i'll do if i run into them i'll blow up so uh, move on to the one who is was chained to you and it safely removes it as soon as you know all three are removed you're fine you can all stack up go where you like so that's how you deal with chains if it happens and you know, you get the eye um, try and act quickly with it we don't have long